One of the areas that I work in is security printing, which is using labels, packaging, and variable data printing. And so variable data printing is very important. It takes a lot of computer science. You, if you look at a digital press like the HP Indigo, you'll see it has a 12-pack of major processors on board. The reason for that is so that it can provide a different set of data on every single label or package that goes out. That's called variable data printing, or VDP. And VDP is very important because it allows you then to have a unique ID or multiple IDs for each package or label that goes out. I brought a couple of marks here. This one actually shows a small sheet of 16 different. You'll wonder what's different in each of these. I've got a different hidden mark, which is called a covert mark or a digital watermark, hidden behind these sort of uh, solid tones in each of these places. More importantly, and one that you can see are the overts that are actually visible. And those are these 2D barcodes that are here along with the colors that are around those. Each of those allow you to have a barcode reader read the barcode and plug you to a different web page if needed. And the mark that's around that actually allows you then to legitimize it with a second stage. The power from this comes from the fact that data has to stream out to these labels at real time as they're printing. And you say, well, how, how much work can that be? The Indigo actually prints things out at 812 pixels per inch. You go, why is it 812? Well, it's because it's 320 per centimeter. So it's tied to the metric system. But if you do a quick multiplication of that and you recognize that there's a different color for each of these pixels, there's as many as 800 by 800, which is, you can do the math, is 640,000 pixels per square inch and I'm moving this along at, let's say, for example, 30 meters a minute, that's a lot of data to be printing out. We need to be able to program that. So what we generally do is try to get as much bang for the buck as we can and only have the variable areas be as small as necessary. So I've got a couple of other examples here that really illustrate the gamut of protection you can provide. In this case, I've got five different little photos, each of which could have a unique covert symbol associated with it. One of the things that my colleagues have produced is halftone steganography, where we actually have hidden information that's tied into how we do our halftoning. Those work very, very well on spot colors, and so that might be what I've shown here in the spot color area. There's also digital watermark providers that are out there, and they will provide that in the image itself. What I show in this label here is the ability to have really simple things that provide a lot of variability. We call this crazy text, and what it actually has is a wide variety of features. Here it's a very, very difficult to see, but there's a light gray turn arrow here. There's this sort of red warning sign, and there's this black square. If I now come down to here, I have a red square, a black smiley face, and a cyan ampersand. Let's suppose that I just have 30 or 40 different of those characters, a smiley face, an ampersand, a star, etc., and I have them in 10 different colors. You can see very quickly, wait, wait, I've got 40 times 10. I have 400 different characters that I can provide in any space. I only need three or four of those to have billions of possibilities in, in terms of what I've put in for the crazy text. So if you add that with what I've done with the color tiles, what I've done with the barcode, and then what I've done with some of the other more covert features that are on the packaging, I very quickly have the ability to roll out more different packages than there are corks in the universe. I'm assuming that HP aren't the only people doing this sort of thing. What other manufacturers might be doing this sort of thing? No, no. So we actually have a wide variety of partners that work on this. Anybody who is a target for counterfeiting or for illicit economy. Illicit economy worldwide is $1.4 trillion, is the estimate by the World Economic Forum's Illicit um, Economy Council, which I'm part of. Anybody who is a target for counterfeiters is interested in being able to provide protection through variable data printing on their packaging. Good targets for that are anybody who has a luxury good, where they're actually charging you more because you trust the brand. A luxury good provider then could have, for example, a, a simple label there that ties them into the back end. A luxury good manufacturer also has some advantages because their supply chain may be very limited. In other words, they they only have a few stores in the world that actually provide their products. Think of like Gucci or somebody like that. And so they can actually directly, because the, the, uh, the amount of profit that they make per good is high enough for them to individually label each of those, they might want a very strong label out there that allows them to authenticate it. Somebody else who wants to do that is somebody who's differentiating within a brand. And that might be, for example, somebody who is a wine provider. You know, so if you've got somebody at a winery, most people actually don't know much about wine, and they pick their wine off of the label. 
And so the label is both a differentiator and then a way for them to actually legitimize the wine one, one at another. You, you'd be surprised how much counterfeiting is actually done in wine. Pharmaceutical providers are one. $75 billion of estimated counterfeiting in pharmaceuticals every year, and they're okay. They want to spend a lot on the label because it's a very high margin item providing a very valuable service for their end customers. You could actually say that they're responsible if they don't do this because they do have such a high margin and they are a good target for counterfeiters because of the small size of production for those. Playing devil's advocate here, are you, sh are you sure this isn't just all about just getting more money in? I mean, what, what's the problem if, um, if somebody kind of, you know, puts something different in a box that looks a bit the same? Yeah, absolutely. So aside from the primary um, disruption of the brand, which might be something that HP would be more concerned about, you have then products which are providing cancer protection, which are providing malarial protection, which are doing some kind of a healthcare service. You could also have parts that are going onto airplanes or cars. You could also have people who aren't just interested in making money off of the counterfeiting, which is the usual case. Most people who are doing the counterfeiting are trying to be in this for long term. They pay their engineers very well because they don't have to do marketing or sales or any brand uh, development. But what also happens is this channels money into the hands of few. And if those few happen to be state-sponsored terrorists, you've got yourself a legitimate concern that money is being centralized into the hands of people who want to use that money for something much more dangerous than just simply making money off of your brand. We'd like to say a big thank you to Audible.com for supporting the Computer File channel. They're the leading provider of audiobooks online. They've got over 250,000 titles to choose from. So for your 30-day free trial, go over to audible.com slash computerfile. Now, I'd like to recommend a book by Richard L. Sanders today. It's called The Phoenix Conspiracy, and it's one of a series of books I got hooked on a couple of years back. I'm up to about book six now. Richard's imagined an amazing universe of humans and aliens and a galactic empire with kings and queens and all sorts of really interesting ideas. So check out The Phoenix Conspiracy. Sign up to your 30-day free trial at audible.com slash computerfile. Thanks once again to Audible for supporting the Computerfile channel. I can tell that something's changed because I've got the original and the new steganographic image with me. But if I just sent out an image of my dog and I never sent out the original that the camera took, no one's going to know that it's been imperceptibly changed because they haven't got a reference.